today's challenge will be to swap the alternator in this 2011 GLK 350 X204. All right, and we start by getting access by removing the engine cover and the uh, the air hoses. And you will need to disconnect the battery. That probably goes without saying, but. It's a very important part of the job. And all you really need to do is disconnect the negative terminal, uh, which is definitely the way to always disconnect a battery. Uh, even if you're removing it, do the negative first. That way there's no danger of shorting anything out when you're doing the positive because there's no longer a circuit. And counterintuitively, uh, next step is going to be to drain the cooling system and that's because this hose is in the way and there's really no way to work around it. You have to remove it and doing so uh, opens up the cooling system at the very bottom so um, you will have to drain it. So now is a good time to go ahead and do that antifreeze uh, refresh that you've been planning to do anyway. Okay, conveniently, the uh, drain apparatus is here just on the side. You don't even have to lift the car, although the front cover does have to come off. Uh, it's already off in this case uh, for other work I've been doing. But basically, your drain petcock is right there. Okay, to drain the system, you just have to turn this valve to open. And it can be a little, little tight. Turn the pickcock to the counterclockwise. Uh, you may need to use a, a pair of pliers or something. Uh, if yours is like mine, it's pretty stiff and needs a little, little extra tension. You can put a hose on this, uh, on the actual drain here. Uh, I don't need to in this case because there's a bucket there. And it's not going to go anywhere. And remove the cap on your coolant reservoir uh, to let air get in and the antifreeze get out. Okay, while that's draining, might be a good time to go ahead and uh, get your belt detentioned. Uh, the tensioner is right there in the middle. It uses a 17 millimeter uh, nut on the front to turn it. And once you've turned it, you can Pull it off wherever you want. I'll just take it off the alternator right now. Uh, but I am going to just go ahead and get the going to go ahead and get the belt out of the way because it uh, is just going to be in the way until I move. And I would highly recommend having a diagram on belt routing because I always forget how it really goes. Uh, so this will this will help me when I go to put the belt back on because it always seems so obvious taking it off and always so confusing putting it on. Uh, otherwise you can just take a photo and refer to it. Okay, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and cut this, uh, this zip tie off here uh, that holds some of the cabling that goes up to the front of the motor. Uh, because that will prevent you from getting the alternator out until it's done. So that's clear now. The four bolts that hold on the alternator, two top and two on the bottom, uh, are E12 bolts. So you'll need a, an E12 socket, but you're also going to be using a 10 millimeter closed end wrench. Uh, in this case, a ratchet wrench. This is going to save you a lot of time uh, you don't need it, uh, but you're going to be down there fiddling with those lower bolts for a long time if you don't have one of these. Now, if you've watched my videos, you know I almost always tell you, take out the hard bolts first. Uh, I've seen so many videos where uh, somebody will take out top bolts like this, and then they get to the bottom, and the alternator is flopping over while they're trying to loosen the bolts. It's Everything's just difficult. Get the bottom ones out um, where there's no weight against you, there's nothing working against you, and then get the easy top ones out afterwards. 
Okay, placing the, the hard bolt is the back bottom bolt. And uh, in this case, I just placed the uh, placed it by feel entirely. You can't see it at all. Uh, but once you get it turned out, really just uh, just in a couple turns, it should be finger tight, and you'll be able to remove it uh, by finger, which will be a lot quicker than even spinning a ratchet wrench. Okay. You may not be able to get that bolt out uh, because of clearance to the uh, to the fender sheet metal. Um, that's okay. Just leave it in there for now, and uh, as soon as you get the other ones loosened up, you'll be able to uh, to get it. Now, the bottom one you can probably get to if you have a very small uh, you got a very small ratchet with your E12 socket. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and reuse my. Uh, Reuse my 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. Okay, that one's not coming out either, so just work around it. I recommend that you take off this uh, T30 uh, clamp here that holds this cable in place. It's just going to be in your way, uh, so take out the Take out the bolt and push the cable back out of the way. Uh, should be able to keep it back there where it won't get into any mischief. That's going to just open up all kinds of access. Now uh, you can just get to those top bolts uh, just simply with a ratchet and your uh, E12 socket. It's time to take this time to take this hose out of our way now. All right, this is part of that hose. Uh, it's an odd Y-shaped hose, so you're going to need to get in there and compress this clamp. At which point, you should be able to pull this hose off. Okay, that's a little tight. Get the clamp all the way out of the way. Uh, okay, you may need to get a pair of uh, pliers on the hose to give it a bit of a twist to break it free. Um, this has probably been on there since 2011, so uh, that's 13 years ago. And get ready for a little fluid because um, your pet cock will not have drained your entire system. Uh, so there's definitely a splash of fluid in these then pretty much every hose you're going to take off. Okay, now the bucket is in place. Uh, clamp is loose. Maybe a little too loose. Uh, and it should just be a matter of working that hose out of there. Uh, again, these have been in there for a while. Uh, they're going to be they're going to be well and truly uh, tight. So be ready for that. Okay, folks. Uh, it I'm sure it would come off, but it's just not worth the hassle. Uh, I've got at this point. I've got this thing to the point where I can. Uh, well, there we go. There's our flow coming out of the top of the hose. Um, We've got it to the point where it's really out of the way, so it's not going to affect our ability to complete the job. So I'm just going to leave it back there and go ahead and take that last bolt out now. All right, the alternator is now loose. Uh, I can rotate it up take all the bolts out okay you now have access to this uh, this connector here uh, which only requires squeezing 
this quick release and wiggling the plug off the back. Okay, once again, dealing with the 13 years of uh, close proximity, so it took a little bit of a little bit of a help with a screwdriver. Now, the last remaining hurdle to getting this out is to remove the large bolt that holds the main connection to the battery. And to do that, you're going to have to get this uh, get this plastic plug off the back. And again, they should just pop right off, but they don't. Take the 12 millimeter nut off, wiggle the cable off, and your alternator is now a free agent can be removed easily through the area you've created here by removing that hose. Okay, one thing I would do, uh, just for safety's sake, is I notice that there is a vacuum line here that goes to this, this device. Uh, you're going to want to probably move that out of the way. Uh, I'm going to get it freed up here. And then just pull it off. Okay, that's just going to keep you from damaging that. Uh, and now we should be able to get the alternator through this gap pretty easily. Okay. And as with most replacement jobs, uh, this is a good time to just take a look at the old part and the new part just to make sure the configuration is the same, uh, connectors are the same. Uh, the bolt patterns, this installation mounting points are the same. So we're good to go. Drop the new unit in and start reinstalling the uh, connectors. Alright, slide the main output cable over the stud uh, centered in the strain relief and put the new nut on okay. It should be tight, but not gorilla tight. There's no, uh, all this nut's doing is holding the cable in place. So uh, don't get crazy. Now I'm gonna wait to put the connector on, the other connector, the plug in, until the alternator's mounted because uh, while you're, Fiddling around and trying to get the first bolt started, uh, you could put some stress on that cable and you don't want to break it. So uh, it'll be easy enough to get to after we get it, the uh, alternator bolted in place. All right, and if you recall, these bolts were pretty much impossible to get to, to get out uh, with the alternator not entirely out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place all four bolts uh, in the mounting holes and then rotate the alternator into place okay, where the lower bolts should not be able to come out because of the same reason I couldn't get them out when I was trying to remove it initially. Okay, so it's a matter of lining this thing up and all four mating surfaces are going to have to be pretty much lined up to get any of the bolts started. Uh, if you do just the top ones and leave a big gap on the bottom, uh, this is not going to go in. So, uh, 
you just need to rotate it around, find the sweet spot, and get the first bolt started. After that, I promise it gets a lot easier. Okay, yes, my hose has started draining again. And I did get lucky and I got the first bolt is actually started. Uh, so, with any luck, I'll be able to get the second top bolt started. Kind of help line the whole thing up. And it pays to have the light where you can actually see it, which I don't. So it's by feel. Okay, there it is. The top two are started, so now just a matter of turning them in uh, with my ratchet. Okay, I'm going to leave a little gap uh, just to give me a little wiggle room to get the bottom bolt started. Uh, and because this is all being supported by the top bolts, getting these bottom ones in is really a piece of cake. Uh, they're lined up and they can be twisted in by finger until they're nearly flush with the, uh, the alternator. Okay, those are tight, finger tight, and it's time to turn down the top ones and get them finished. And again, they're small bolts, they need to be good and snug, but not much more than that. So uh, don't go crazy, don't break a bolt, don't ruin your day. So. Get these two tightened down. Okay, nice and snug. And now, can finish up the bottom ones with my 10 millimeter sock, my 10 millimeter ratchet wrench. And getting the last one's going to be the trickiest part, like it was taking them off. Uh, just have to find the bolt head with your fingertip, place the wrench on it, and then turn away. And next, we just get to put this plug on. Uh, some of you may have noticed this silver sheet that you won't have in your car. That's actually a supplemental heat shield that I installed whenever I did the motor mounts on this. Because as you can see, the motor mount lives less than an inch from the exhaust manifold, which means it's just soaking in heat day and night. So uh, it does have a very thin tin uh, heat shield over it, but I put another layer of uh, fabric heat shield flame retardant material over the top to protect it. I would recommend you look that up and do it. If you're gonna be doing uh, motor mounts, it costs about 10 bucks and it'll probably far extend the length of their uh, lifespan. So. Line up and plug in the connector on the back and make sure you get a nice click when you seat it and you should be good to go. Uh, the one last little bit of business here is uh, there was a strain relief going through this little clip here uh, which 
course you can't see because this is in the way. Um, so I'm going to replace that just out of general caution. Okay. And luckily I had a blue one so I didn't have to make a trip to the store to get another blue one. All right. Okay, now all that remains is, before I forget it, putting this vacuum line back on and running this uh, strain relief back in place. Alright, now I uh, just have to put the hoses back on and can refill the system. that in make sure you hear the click of the uh, quick release and uh, it's got an o-ring and should be sealed again so all right we're good uh, okay ready to fill the radiator however came across a little bit of a glitch um, it's my first uh, newer Mercedes since a 1970 280 SEL so um, I wasn't familiar with the uh, with the antifreeze spec and I ordered the antifreeze that was proper for this 2011 version car uh, which happened to be a, um, a blue antifreeze and I just realized as I'm getting ready to start to mix it in that this one has red antifreeze in it. Now that's that happens because basically what happened is in 2014 Mercedes updated their um, their antifreeze spec, uh, and it's not an uncommon modification or upgrade, whatever you want to call it, for people to upgrade to the new uh, pink antifreeze spec. So um, basically, I leave my expensive gallon of uh, sourced antifreeze where it is, and I go to the local big box auto parts store and I buy two gallons of pre-mixed because that's all they had of the red stuff so this one as you notice see it's 2014 and newer uh, Mercedes-Benz vehicles so this is the right spec should work just fine okay first step is to pour in enough to bring the reservoir up to full or even slightly past full which should then work its way through the rest of the system okay that's about full um, now I'm going to start the car and let it start percolating through the system open the garage door a little bit
Okay, that seems to be uh, holding, so in all likelihood the level will drop over the next uh, drive or two, which would be very normal. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to put the cap back on the reservoir, and I'm going to check very carefully for any leaks in the system on the hoses I disconnected, uh, anything else I moved. Okay, all looking good. So now I'll put the rest of the engine uh, components back on.